In this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can use the toolpath tiling option when working with a design that is larger than our machine's work area, or it may be that the material we have available is smaller than the design. So let's just go to File, Close. So let's go and open an existing file. So in your project folder, we're going to open the large Howling Wolf file. Okay, so here is our part. Uh, if we take a look in the lower left hand corner, we can take a look at the job dimension. So we're currently working with a width of 72 inches and a height of 48 inches. So this size is actually bigger than most CNC machines workable area. And there's a feature called the toolpath tiling, which will enable us to cut uh, a large project built up from smaller pieces. So let's take a look at this. So first off, we'll tile our windows horizontally so we can see the 2D view at the top and the 3D view at the bottom. Then we'll use this icon over here to switch over to the toolpaths tab on the right hand side. So let's go ahead and preview all of those toolpaths. So I'll use the preview all toolpath option and that's just going to um, create a simulation of how our sign is going to look here in the 3D view. Double click on the waste material to get rid of that and there is our finished sign. So this sign is actually made up of a series of pockets. Uh, and then we've got a profile pass that uses a vbit tool uh, in order for us to create this beveled text and then we finally have a profile pass uh, that cuts our part out of our material. So let's presume that we have a CNC machine which has a machine bed area of 24 inches by 24 inches. So how do we machine something that is 72 inches by 48 inches like we have in our example? Well, we're going to look at how we can use the toolpath tiling feature to overcome this issue to enable us to cut this sign out in a series of small tiles. So let's just close out of the toolpath preview form. And so in order for us to tile our toolpaths, we can come over to this icon here in the toolpaths tab. So this is the tile toolpath option. And if I click on that, that's going to open up the toolpath tiling manager. Okay, so this window uh, can be moved around and it can remain open whilst we still interact with the rest of the software. For example, I could check this option here to make all of the toolpaths visible uh, in the background whilst our toolpath tiling manager window is open. Okay, to close out of the toolpath tiling manager, you simply use this option here to hide the tiling manager. Okay, so nothing will actually happen until the tile toolpath option is checked within this form. So if I click on that, that will check that tile toolpath option and that will give me access to further options within the form to control how we create those tiles. Okay, and so the software will basically divide up the toolpaths into tiles that are dependent on the tile size that we enter in the form here. So you can see uh, that at the moment the tile is the same width and height as our actual project where it's picked that up from our job setup. And so the toolpath tiling manager gives us three different methods of creating our tiles for machining. So we have the option to create individual tiles. So if we have issues with the size for our machine area in both the X and the Y axis, we would use this option. Then we have the option to feed through in X and we also have the option to feed through in Y. And this would be used if we have some kind of restriction in either the X or the Y axis so that when we can feed through the material. So for example, if you are making long thin products such as mantelpieces, then you would use one of these options. Now our desktop machine that we are using has a bed size of 24 inches by 24 inches. And so we're going to need to use the individual tiles option. So at the moment, um, our tile 
is set up to the same dimensions as our job size. So we've got the 72 by 48, okay? So that's just creating one tile. And you'll notice in the center, we have some text and it says T1 in red. And that's symbolizing this is tile one. But we know we want to use uh, much smaller tiles. So if we go over to the width, we're going to change that. So we're going to put in 24 inches for the width. And we're also going to put in 24 inches for the height. And then we can use this option here to update those tiles. Okay, so now you'll notice uh, in the 2D view, we have T1, we have T2, T3, T4, T5 and T6, okay? The active tile is the highlighted one, so we can see that that T1 is red as opposed to the other tiles that are grayed out. We can also see in the 3D view, uh, tile one, the toolpath preview just for that tile. We can also see within our toolpath tiling manager, the currently active tile is showing tile T1 from the drop-down list. And if we click on that, we can select tile T2 and that will make that the active tile. We can see that that is now red. We can see that that section of our sign is now showing the toolpath preview. And again, we can go to tile three and you can see that now this tile is selected. Not only can I use the drop down menu to select the tiles, but I can also double click in the spaces here in our 2D view uh, for each tile. Now the 3D view doesn't really show us a realistic view of how the part is going to be machined in a 24 by 24 inch tile. Okay, so you can see we're currently looking at tile one and we can see that the X zero, Y zero origin is here in the lower left hand corner. Now if we change tiles, so let's make tile two the active tile, you can see that the origin remains the same over at the X zero, Y zero in the lower left hand corner. And that's because we have an option within the toolpath tiling manager to draw the toolpaths in the original position for visualization. Like it says, this is purely for visualization purposes only, and this will just show you the toolpath that you're creating for a particular tile as part of the whole job. Now, if we go to view, we can use the option to draw origin, okay? So we can see our X0, Y0 origin here. And if we just go to our toolpath preview, we're just going to reset that preview. And then over within our toolpath tiling manager, if we uncheck this option to draw toolpaths in original position for visualization, uh, we'll now be presented with a 24 by 24 inch tile to visualize the toolpaths per tile so that we can get a good idea of how all of our individual tiles will look when we cut them out. So then we can go ahead and preview all the toolpaths for that particular tile and we can see how that tile will look. We could reset the preview, we could go to tile number three by double clicking on that tile in the 2D view and again we could preview all the toolpaths for that tile and the software will pull out all the toolpaths for the active tile that you've got selected to simulate the preview for that tile. Now it's important to note that with uh, this option switched on or off, it doesn't actually affect the X0, Y0 position of the tiles and the toolpaths that we actually save out. And X0, Y0 will always be where we set it in the material setup and will be the same for each individual tile. Another option that we have in the toolpath tiling manager is this tile overlap. And this allows us to overlap toolpaths into the next tile by an amount that we specify here. Now the reason that you'd want to apply an overlap would be that you may be using special shaped tools which use all or part of the diameter of the tool where you may need to overcut to get the required effect from the tool. 
For example, if you were using a V-bit, you would need to overrun the edges of your tile in order to complete the cuts using the side of the bit. So for example, if we put in a tile overlap of a quarter of an inch, and then use this option here to update the tiles. When we go and preview the toolpaths for tile one, if we go in here and just say preview all toolpaths, Okay, and if we just switch on the toolpaths, and then if we just zoom in on the 3D view there, we can see that with that overlap of a quarter of an inch, we can see that the toolpaths are actually extending past the tile uh, for uh, the overlap so that we get everything that we need within the space of this tile. So now that we're happy with the tiles that we've previewed, we can now begin to save them out. So let's close out of the preview toolpaths form, and then we'll go over to save toolpath. Okay, so in our save toolpaths form, we have the option to output all visible toolpaths to one file, as well as output tile toolpaths. And this is automatically checked because we have our toolpath tiling manager open, and we want to create tiled toolpaths. Okay, you can see that we have an error. The visible toolpaths use different tools. Okay, so we've got all of our uh, tools checked here. So let's just select all of the tools um, that we're going to use to clear different pockets out. Okay, so we've got these pockets that all use a half inch tool. And we're going to output all of those into one file. Okay, so we'd save them out as normal, remembering to keep this switched on to tile our toolpaths, select your post processor from the drop down list, and then use this option here to save toolpath. Okay, so here we could say pocket, and we'll just call that one all, and then we can simply go ahead and press save. And then if I go ahead and save that toolpath again, just so that we can see those um, dot tap files that we just saved and what you can see is that the software has condensed pocket one two and three into one file and then it's divided that toolpath into six segments for each of the tiles that we have and so for each toolpath that we save out we're actually going to get six toolpaths one for each tile so let's just cancel out of there and so that completes this example in creating individual tiles using the Toolpath Tiling Manager. If you'd like to find out how the feed-through tiling options work, there is another tiling tutorial which uses a 3D toolpath example. And you can find this in the related videos section for this tutorial within the browser. So let's go ahead and save this file. So we'll go to File, Save As, and then we're just going to call this one toolpath tiling 2d toolpaths and we'll just save that out and that completes this tutorial